Hey cadets, if this video just uploaded for you, then that means I am streaming right now. And where I'm streaming is right here on YouTube. Check the description of this video for a link. Hope to see you over at the stream. And if you've missed the stream, well then just enjoy this video. Some of you have seen on my recent stream that I'm doing Road to Riches. And indeed, I am. Don't worry guys, I still have my Xbox account, I still play on Xbox, and I still intend to use my Xbox account to create content and play with people. But I feel like I want to have a PC account as well. But let's make some money here really quick before we stream again. I've also figured out some ways to improve my streams. So really quick, if you're watching this video and this video was just uploaded, I might be streaming right now. So go check me out. I'm streaming on YouTube. Now, let's get some money. And by money, I mean we're going to continue off of the last video I had uploaded where I decided that Road to Riches was the best way I have to make money right now. Aside from maybe mining, but I don't really want to go mining. So if you're going to do Road to Riches, make sure you have the best jumping ship that you can get. The hauler works fine. You can get a lot better than a hauler for jump range, but if you're in the early stages of Elite Dangerous before you can get like a Diamondback Explorer or an Asp Explorer. Um, the hauler will work just fine. As you can see, I'm sitting here at 23 light years. Uh, you don't need any hard points. You shouldn't be in, in any combat, and they'll just slow you down. Some people like to bring heat sinks just in case they screw up a fuel scoop, but I, I never need them. Core internal, you want mostly Ds on everything. You want the highest class that you can for the object, but you want them to be D, so they're low weight. Um, except the frame shift drive, you want that as as good as you could possibly get it. So you definitely want an A grade frame shift drive if you can get it. Optional internals. You must have the best fuel scoop you can possibly bring with you. If your highest slot is a 3, bring a 3A fuel scoop. If your highest slot is a 4, bring a 4A fuel scoop, etc. A vehicle will be nice to bring in case you intend to land on planets once in a while to investigate something mysterious that you find. That's always nice. Some shields, but having a D-grade shield is best because it adds the least amount of mass. But what's important to bring is the detailed surface scanner. You're going to be getting a good amount of your money from doing these probes on the planets. So let's do Road to Riches. It's far faster than slave trading, and it's far faster than doing other missions they have for me. So I'm going to use the Road to Riches website. I already went to Finja. Road to Riches enables me to just visit systems within the bubble and scan the high valuable planets therein and come back to get a lot of money from um, discovery credits. And given the fact that I'm an explorer by trade, this is a good way for me to make early cash. So I just put in my location on a website and it gave me a uh, dossier of systems to uh, go check out and as I check them out I get paid and as I get paid I can upgrade my ship hopefully get out of this hauler and into an asp explorer soon probably very soon you too can do road to riches if you're a new player um, if you want exploration to be your bread and butter so it will get you more exploration rank over everything else see what I got trailblazer already it's as easy as loading the website which I'll put in the description the one that I use putting in your location and range and all that and letting it tell you where to go APSU am I going to a university uh, the most important things to scan while you're on Road to Riches are, of course, Earth-like worlds, but also ammonia worlds and water worlds are big buco bucks. All right, here we are. When you go to the system in question, you can usually see the planets that you want to go to. It's probably this one, right? And I think it's a terrestrial water world that we're looking for. And it tells you on the website what, what bodies in the system are good. First, we fly up to it and give it a regular scan. Why, why am I not slowing down? Why am I not slowing down? Ah! Just scanning the planet is a good way to get a lot of credits, but you get a lot more credits when you also surface scan them. That means you need to bring a surface scanner with you on your ship. One straight at it, and as high as you can without missing. There you go. Now I'll go around behind the planet, so you're kind of hitting both sides of it. Now it's six probes, right? So now I can hit one on that side. One on that side, one on that side, and one on that side. That's money in the bank. Oh shit. Didn't have the game client up. Uh, Schmethels 102. It's an unfortunate name. A1 is a terrestrial water world. It'd be A1, so that's a terrestrial water world. This has a brownish atmosphere. But who am I to judge? Earth was once purple or something, right? Although purple's awesome. I gotta shoot right past this, aren't I? Might be able to get a scan off before I shoot past it. I might. Come on. Come on. I did. I did it. 
Oh no. All right, let's go um, throw our probes into this giant ocean that is a planet. This giant planet that is an ocean. Oh, are you serious? I'm sure that will get me 2% right there. You have to hit 90% in order to completely scan the planet. It gives you that bonus 10% because it, the, I don't know, the drones are able to triangulate or something to get you the last you need. I don't know. I don't know the lore. But anyways, um, see there, I got the last 2% I needed. It went to 90 and then it instantly shot to 100. Every planet has a certain number of probes it gives you for an efficiency target. Shooting that number of probes or fewer net to the efficiency target bonus, which gets you more credits. If you shoot a bunch of probes, then it gives you less money. That's all that there is in this system, so let's check out what we got in the next one. That's the right. <laughs> That's the right. Uh, um, what planet was it? Two? I think it was two. Oh, well. Now, you can scan extra objects in the systems you visit if you want extra money. I might just hit this gas giant up. God, that's a beautiful one. I love that color. Now, let's shoot it. This is a 20 prober. Oh, my God. So, now we're going to have to do a big, uh, a big pattern here. Um, I'm going to do the basics. That way. I'm going to go to the, the corners here. <laughs> corners. You know what I mean. You're just kind of shooting a pattern, you know? Remember where you've shot already. Okay, so I have 17 impacted. It takes 20 probes. I need, oh, I need a decent amount more percentage. So I'm going to shoot kind of like right here. I'm going to try to gobble that amount up. I might actually have to get out of that and drive around back to see how the back's looking. So I only have two more probes after that one hits. That one's going to hit pretty well, I think. Eh, well, well enough. And we're going to find the biggest bald spots we can and shoot those. That's the 20 probes, I think. And unfortunately, I only got to 81%, so I'm not going to hit the efficiency target bonus because I've already used the maximum amount of efficiency target probes. I should have been moving around more when I was shooting the probes and finding the biggest uh, bald spots. For some reason, this is harder for me to do on PC than it is on console. Not sure why. Once you have a planet mapped, you always see it as a grid. Unless you turn off, switch to combat mode, then you can see it back as normal again. I might want to scan both these worlds. That's probably just a high metal content world, though. But those are worth a decent amount of credits, too. But just because it looks like an Earth-like world doesn't mean it is one. Um, usually, if the land masses look darker, it's just a heavy metal content world. This one, if it was actually an Earth-like world, those land masses would be bright green, not so much dark green, brown as it appears there. Then I'll show you here. Let's get this water world out of the way first. Let's get up here and map this sucker. Looks like it has a frozen frozen pole to snowball almost back and then we'll do the usual spread online people have different spread sheets and where they recommend you shoot your probes i've never looked at them so i don't know what they're like they're probably better than what i have but this is just what i do and what i've always done you see it works out for these regular size planets and moons are really easy to scan there's been some moons that i've scanned with a single probe again it looks like it's an earth-like world but i promise you that's not i promise you that's a heavy middle content world it's not bright enough so curb your enthusiasm kids and it'll tell you what kind of planet it is right there in that lower left panel right when it scans you can also read what type it is on the system map once you have it scanned heavy middle content world told you still worth a lot of money but nothing compared to an earth-like world um it's not glowing that bright color that's a ship that's kind of in slip space circling around it ships going faster than light make that glow on our sensors very dark planet, actually. Um, but I think it's cool, though. And another at the side, and another at the side. Oh, shit! I'm lucky this guy isn't steering me into that planet. <sighs> yeah. What do you think about that, bitch? Interdict these nuts. Alright, I'm here. Let's see where we're going. Probably another terrestrial water world. A7, terrestrial water world. When using the codes to determine what planet or body you're visiting to scan for credits, A, B, and C would be the stars. So this would be A, this would be B, and this would be C. And then these are the numbers. One, two, three, right? So A1 would be this object. A2 would be this object. That would be B, and this would be B1, B2, etc. This one's kind of attached to both stars. So this would be B, C, 1. Moons, again, go back to letters. This would be A9C. This would be A9 lowercase c. A9 lowercase b, A9 lowercase a. Understand? Understand. 
and I forgot where we're going. So Road to Riches is telling me, in this system, A7 is a terrestrial water world. Five, six, seven. So we're gonna target that, and we're gonna fly for it. Get over here, A7. Luckily, it's only 600 light seconds away. You can get things like hundreds of thousands of light seconds away, which can take a long time to fly to. Half an hour, 40 minutes, even an hour. If you go into a system where the designated target that they want you to scan is hundreds of thousands of light seconds away, I would consider maybe just moving on to the next system. It might not be worth your time. Everybody has a different line they draw. Uh, some people draw the line at 400,000 light seconds, some people less, some people more. I have low patience, so I draw the line at 100,000 light seconds. If it's over that, if it's six digits or more, then I'm not going out to it. Unless there's a bunch of Erdenlike worlds all together that far out, then I might go. If you ever crash on a terrestrial water world, you automatically are required to play Subnautica. I don't make the rules, I just, uh, I just let you know what they are. Yay! We're already done with this system, kids. Unless we want to scan something else here. Uh, sometimes it's worth looking. I have followed Road to Riches, and I have been sent to uh, systems and told to scan a water world or something. And I've looked, and I've found other things, including Earth-like worlds, that are not mentioned. <laughs> so, always give it a, a, an eyeball before you leave the system. If there's already good stuff in the system, there might be more. Road to Riches guides will tell you how far away the object is from the drop-in zone that you're looking to scan. So before I jumped here, I read that the objects in this system that I'm going to scan are about 30,000 light seconds out from the star. Not ideal, but it's not too bad. They're under C, so they're over here under the behind the third star. So it's these two, and I'll probably scan this guy too. It looks like it's tasty. 34,000 is a chunk away, so I'm going to have to sit here and drum my fingers for a bit. I'm going to hit both those water worlds and whatever that other planet is. It looks like it's another heavy content world, but it could be another water world. And it could be that the uh, website just neglected to mention it. Again, I've seen it a lot. Full-on earth flag worlds right next to where you're scanning, and the website doesn't mention them. <laughs> and ammonia worlds, they always forget to mention ammonia worlds and those are worth almost as much as earth likes i'm glad both these plants are right next to each other it makes the travel time uh, a lot less painful all the pretty colors eh? yay now we follow this co-orbit path here never another seven prober here let's see what this is i'm guessing it's a uh heavy content world. Whenever you can grab an additional opportunity that's nearby, do so. Water world. Ah, it was a water world. And wouldn't you know, Road to Riches completely neglected to mention it, even though it was right next to those other two water worlds it sent us to. Case in point, kids. Don't trust nobody. Who just missed out on Neon and Mill creds here. Any and all resources you use for Elite Dangerous, will straight up lie to your face all day. Never doubt that. Excellente. We're starting to get some money here, kids. I think there's one more I wanted to do before we head back. Because it's one jump away and all that. B1 is said to be a water world, so I'll mark that. I don't see anything else that would interest me here. It all looks like rice. Uh, rice is an elite dangerous term that stands for uh, planets and stuff that are of very little interest. Rock and ice. I also think of it as rice is a bunch of, you know, filler. Most moons, especially moons going around gas giants, are just rice. Sometimes rice can be interesting, and some of my favorite discoveries happen to be rice-type planetoids, but they're not usually good for scanning purposes. They give you by far the least amount of credits. So when you're doing Road to Riches, I recommend not eating your rice. Almost there. This will be the last one I scan before I head back home. You don't want to have too much discovery data saved up on your ship at one time, because if I were to be destroyed right now, I'd lose everything. So periodically, it's good to go back and sell the data. You might not have to go all the way back home. You should stop somewhere where you can sell the majority of your data. Alright, all done. Let's head back home. There's the exclusion zone. I hate it when this happens. Never saw the damn exclusion zone. Let's see what I made. Universal Carter Graphics. First, I'm going to read what I scanned here. This was about eight water worlds and then some other stuff. We made uh, 8,900,000. That took me maybe an hour, hour and a half at most. I'm an ally finally. You get reputation. Um, wherever you sell your data at. So be mindful where you intend to sell your data because you can get a lot of 
high reputations. I can upgrade my ship to an Asp Explorer or whatever. Until next time, kids.